Mm -hmm. Pretty good, pretty good. What? What is a brain type nutraic peptide? And why is mine 650 and normal is 100? Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to become part of the Transplant Helper community. Well, hey, Transplant Hope community, my name is Jim Merle, and today we're going to be sitting down for just a moment to continue our series, Defining the Terms. Now, if you're not already familiar with this series, this playlist, basically what I'm doing here and have done a few episodes and look forward to doing about two or three of these a month, I'm sitting down with you and defining some of those terms that oftentimes we hear in the clinic and the doctor's offices, in the hospitals, maybe even in the labs, where doctors or medical staff use terms that, to be honest with you, they go straight over our head and we don't understand what they're talking about. And I've always believed that knowledge is certainly power, and that particularly is the case if you're a trans transplant patient pre or post or really in general just a patient period in a doctor's office knowledge is always going to be your friend it's always going to equal power and it's going to give you the tools you need to live the best life okay so with that said we're going to start defining today's term of choice and it is the BNP now if you've never heard of the BNP basically that is a shortened acronym of types that refers to the brain type nutraic peptides that are found inside of our bloodstream when our hearts particularly are in some form of stress. Now, whether that stress come because of volume overload or pressure overload, what have you, oftentimes our heart muscle can excrete this particular hormone that really tips the doctors and such off that we're in some type of failure, that we're having some type of stress in the muscle itself. Now, the reason it's referred to as a brain type peptide is because originally when it was discovered way back when, they didn't actually discover it in the heart itself to begin with. They actually found this hormone present in the brain and therefore assumed back then that it had come from the brain. But they turned out later as they did some more dig digging like research is always developing, they found out it was actually a hormone that's actually in the heart muscle itself that is excreted again when that pressure or stress or whatever is uh, is there and it comes out in the blood work. So if you ever sit down with your doctors and they're running a basic cardiological type panel on you and they mention the BMP, this is what they're referring to and it's just one test out of many probably there that are laying out for them that they receive directly from the blood work. Now, it is a huge indicator sometimes, and I wanna say the word sometimes because we'll clarify later, but this can be a huge indicator that you're in some type of failure, uh, stress. It can be at even times an indicator, one of the small indicators that you could have maybe suffered a, a a, a heart attack or something like that. It just really means that there's some kind of injury and, and the problem with the heart muscle. And oftentimes it's attributed to that muscle being stretched or strained, therefore why it excretes this hormone. And it can be a really, a really beginning point in order for them to further test and to try to discover what actually is going on. Now, before we go any further with that, let me clarify that just because your BMP levels are high, we'll mention what that is in a moment, but just because your BMP levels are found to be high does not necessarily mean that you're in heart failure. It doesn't necessarily mean that you had a heart attack because this BMP can also be excreted because of several other things that could be going on in your body. For example, pulmonary hypertension, as aka blood pressure problems, uh, chronic kidney disease can, can help or cause your heart to excrete this, uh, being sepsis, uh, having burns even on the exterior of your body so maybe you burn your hand your arm or something like that your body can produce this suffering from COPD and even as little as suffering from sleep apnea can cause your heart muscle to excrete this again because of the stress and the strain that's being placed on it now basically the reason your body does produce this hormone is actually in its own self-defense okay so if the heart muscle gets under some sort of strain there's too much pressure too much fluid in it around it it produces the bmp which causes your body to basically be its own natural diuretic, okay? So it really allows you literally to pee away fluid for your uh, kidneys and bladder, obviously, but to pee away fluid that, you know, would have been harming you, that would have been putting you under stress. And so sometimes when you are in true heart failure, or other failures similar to it, you'll find people who have a couple of different types 
of fluid retention. Maybe it's in their hands, their feet, their faces, their abdomen. Uh, maybe it's something you cannot see, like me pre-transplant necessarily. You didn't always see my fluid issues, but when those fluid issues are visible, uh, that is a sign that either the BMP is not doing its job or there's so much of that fluid retention that it does not and cannot do its job, okay? So again, if you go into the doctor's office, maybe going to the ER for something, and they come back in the room and say your BMP was high, don't jump to the conclusion that you're in heart failure and you're probably going to need a transplant because that may very well not be the case. However, it could have been an indicator in the beginning that that was the pattern of the path you were eventually going to be going down. But again, it can be there for many other reasons. Now, as far as the levels themselves, and I think it's important that we can interpret some of this blood work, the BMP, and let me clarify, this is separate from what is known as the NT Pro BMP, which is a whole different level, a whole different numbers, but the standard BMP, which is basically ran every time you go into a cardiologist's office, is a level that basically lays out like this. If you are considered to be normal, if there's such a thing as real normal, but if you're considered to be normal, your BMP is going to be less than 100, okay? I had somebody contact me the other day uh, that was worried about this, and it actually concerned me when I first saw it, but she said her BMP uh, came back as a 38. I don't know if 38 is rather low, but I do know this, it does fall on the normal range, okay? So BMP less than 100 is considered normal. Now, farther than that, you may be in some type of mild failure if your BMP numbers fall somewhere between 100 and 300. So right there in that middle part of that 100 to 300 could be a sign that you're in mild cardiac or heart failure. Now, if your number goes above that, for example, if it's 300 to 600, they would consider that as being moderate heart failure, okay? So again, they draw this one blood test, they check it, it comes up between three and 600, that's automatically an assumptive number that says they may be in moderate heart failure. Now, if your number goes between six and 900, they consider that to be severe heart failure, albeit I've actually seen cases where people's BMP numbers are in the 4,000 mark, which definitely could mean an issue, but it could be there because of other things. Now, I don't wanna divide this out too far, take too long in this video, but some of the things that have an impact on the BMP outside of actual heart failure could obviously be age, okay? The older you are, the higher the expected BMP might be. For example, someone who say 75 years old, if they get a number back that their BMP is say 625, they may not immediately claim that this person is in severe heart failure because as you grow older, the BMP number gets higher and higher and higher. As well as the fact, in the opposite of that, someone who is younger may have a lower BMP than someone who is older, obviously. Someone who is is obese. Now this is kind of a brain, uh, kind of confuses me, but someone who is obese or extremely overweight, uh, their BMP is going to be lower because the body has kind of adapted itself. It thinks it's got so much fluid on it and maybe the heart has produced so much of this chemical hormone so many times that it kind of gives up and says, well, I ain't no need to make that because this fluid's not going to go away. Well, that's because this is not fluid. This is fat. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm not making fun of anybody, but you know, been there, done that, got the card. Uh, BMPs can be uh, a little bit hard to read if we're obese, overweight, or if we're older versus younger. But as a baseline, again, those numbers, 100 is normal, under that is normal. Uh, one to 300 is considered mild, three to 600 considered moderate, and then six to 900 and, and on up is considered severe uh, heart failure type of numbers. Now, that doesn't mean, if you get your BMP back and it's extremely high, that doesn't automatically mean you're in heart failure. Again, it could be caused by any of those other issues. I bring up sleep apnea again as one of those. It could be caused from a lot of different things. So don't panic with that. And more than likely, all this is going to cause them to do is to want to do more testing, more investigation. So for example, if your BMP was high, they may turn around and say, give you a call and say, hey, we noticed your BMP was high. That could be an indicator of some problems with your heart. And so they call you back in and now they want to do, uh, for example, an EKG or an echocardiogram. If there's something comes back on that, they may turn around and say, well, we'd like to take you into a cath lab, do an angiogram on you. We'd like to take some pressures in, in that. And you know, there's a lot of things, a lot more invasive testing that they could do later, including CT scans, a lot of things that they could do that are invasive or less invasive than this, 
that would prove that case. Now, really, they don't equate the BMP directly with heart failure unless it is connected with either symptoms or factual numbers, again, that may come out in, say, an echocardiogram, may come out in the cath lab. So if you go in with a high or low BMP, that doesn't necessarily make you uh, determine that you're in heart failure, no keep you from being listed in heart failure because it's much more symptomatic than that. So let's take me, for example, back uh, six and a half, almost seven years ago, pre-transplant. My BMP numbers were somewhere in the neighborhood of about 700 or so, considered severe, but they wasn't just going to say, well, he's got a BMP, let's put him on the transplant list. No, they were looking for symptoms. They were looking me for me to show other numbers in, in the cath labs and such, and also looking for me to say, look, I feel like trash every day. I have no energy. I, I can't get up and go. I lose my breath. I'm gaining fluid in my ankles or, or belly or whatever. Again, they're looking for all of those symptoms to pile themselves up. So what are we really talking about here? Again, the BMP stands for brain type nutrient peptide. It can be an indicator of heart failure, but it doesn't always have to be that. And so basically it's just one of those numbers that if you hear it and you recognize that higher range or something, it may cause you to question your doctors and may cause you to ask them, you know, what are we looking at? Why are we looking at it? And let them do further investigation. I hope this has helped you out in some way. I know these programs are not always fun, but hey, if we have questions, certainly I think we deserve answers and we need answers. And if I can put it in terms that maybe is a little bit more understandable than your doctor does, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, stay stronger, friends.